Does eating red meat give you type 2 diabetes? Well, a new publication supposedly says it does, but in Metabolic Mind, we did a video on a prior study saying exactly the opposite, that it doesn't. And other studies demonstrate remission of type 2 diabetes with ketogenic diets, including plenty of red meat. So what should we believe? Well, my conclusion is that there's no convincing evidence that red meat causes type 2 diabetes, and we shouldn't believe these misleading headlines. Now, there may be other reasons someone chooses to avoid meat. That's fine, right? Everyone's entitled to their own beliefs, but the fear that red meat causes diabetes shouldn't be one of them. Welcome back to Metabolic Mind. I'm Dr. Brett Schur. Metabolic Mind is a nonprofit of Bazooki Group, where we share education and resources about the connection between metabolic health and mental health and ketogenic therapy as a treatment for mental health disorders. So you may be wondering, if we focus on mental health, why am I discussing a study about red meat and type 2 diabetes? Well, ketogenic diets are frequently heavy in red meat. They, they certainly don't have to be, right? And almost any diet that can help someone get into ketosis works. Uh, vegan, vegetarian, Mediterranean, they can all work for ketosis. But, but oftentimes, keto diets contain meat. So if someone believes meat causes diabetes, they may be less likely to try a keto diet or recommend it to their patients. So, so it's important to correct the misleading information circulating about red meat and diabetes. But before we get into the details, please remember our channels for informational purposes only. We're not providing individual or group medical or healthcare advice or establishing a provider-patient relationship. Many of the interventions we discuss can have dramatic or potentially dangerous effects if done without proper supervision. Consult your healthcare provider before changing your lifestyle or your medications. So the basics of this study is that it was a 30-year observational study from the Nurses' Health Study, the Nurses' Health Study 2, and the Health Professional Follow-Up Studies. But Right away from the start, it's important to realize this was observational. There was no intervention. People simply lived their lives, and the researchers collected data and then crunched the data. So this is widely recognized as a you know, weaker level of evidence, especially when compared to randomized control trials or even non-randomized intervention trials. But the structure, this observational structure, allows you know, the researchers to get 30 years of follow-up on tens of thousands of people, which is near impossible in a randomized control trial, right? Now, the main finding was that they found that those who ate the most red meat compared to the least had a slightly higher incidence of type 2 diabetes with a hazard ratio of 1.6 for all red meat, 1.5 for processed red meat, and 1.4 for unprocessed red meat. So the hazard ratios range between 1.4 and 1.6. So when talking about hazard ratios, I always like to point out for reference that the observational studies looking at smoking and cancer risk found a hazard ratio of 15 to 30, depending on the study. Not 1.30, but 30. In any observational study, to provide a result that's truly worth considering, generally should have a hazard ratio above two, which it wasn't in this case. So right away, we can kind of see the quality of the evidence is, is low, but, but it gets even lower. The paper clearly states that those with higher total red meat intake had higher body mass index, more total energy intake, they were less physically active, they were more likely to be current smokers, and were less likely to use multivitamins. So in other words, they were simply less healthy at baseline. That's not because of the red meat, they were just less healthy. This is called healthy user bias, or in this case, unhealthy user bias. We have no way of concluding confidently that it was the red meat causing the diabetes, rather than the fact that they were simply less healthy and had less healthy lifestyle factors, right? So what else were they eating? Well, they ate more calories. What about refined carbs or sugars or ultra-processed foods? I didn't see any of those important details in the paper, but boy, I sure want to know the answer to those questions. Going further, looking at the hazard ratios, the paper also states, these associations were substantially attenuated after further adjusting for time-varying BMI. Now, with hazard ratios down to 1.1 to 1.2. So accounting for BMI, the hazard ratios got even smaller, making it even less likely that the red meat actually caused type 2 diabetes. And the last thing to mention is, is the study concludes that replacing red meat with nuts or legumes or fish reduces the risk of heart disease. And, and this always makes it sound like they actually had people stop eating meat and replace it with these other foods. But remember, there was no intervention in the study. So instead, they state, to estimate the effects of substituting one serving per day of other protein sources for red meats, we included both intakes as continuous variables in the same multivariable Cox model. That just means they tried to use statistical methods to estimate it, which is a very flawed method. 
Okay, that, that was a lot of details about this study. And, and I mean, there are more. Like the fact that, you know, for red meat, they included sandwiches and lasagnas, right? And when you think sandwiches, you can think burgers or regular sandwiches. And what comes with that? Fries and chips and soda. And, you know, it's the same argument about saturated fat, where the, the majority of our saturated fat comes from sandwiches and things like that. Look, these studies get a lot of attention and headlines, but they don't deserve it. If you look at the conclusions of this study and ask, what does this mean for me? There's virtually no correlation. If someone's eating a high carb, high red meat, high calorie diet, they may get type two diabetes, but was it the red meat or is it the sum total of their diet and, and potentially their other healthy or unhealthy lifestyle habits? I think it's clear the answer is the latter. And this kind of weak observational data doesn't tell you anything different. So if someone's using a ketogenic diet as a means to treat their bipolar disorder, their depression, their dementia, or their type 2 diabetes, they can rest assured that there's no convincing data to say they're increasing the risk of type 2 diabetes. And even better, I mean, you can follow your own blood sugar and insulin levels and HbA1c and other tests to see if you're improving or worsening your metabolic health. We, we don't need to rely on low-quality evidence to tell us if we're worsening our metabolic health or improving it. If you're interested in learning more about using ketogenic therapy to treat mental health disorders or other brain-based disorders, please watch our other videos at Metabolic Mind. And you can start with this one that explores how nutrition can impact our brain function and our mental health. Thanks again for watching. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, and we'll see you here next time at Metabolic Mind.